Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, this is Rick, and uh, happy Chapel Day to you. So, uh, this summer I've been going through the book of Daniel, and uh, it's it's some familiar stories to uh, probably many of you. But uh, let's take a look today at uh, Daniel chapter three. All right. So, if you want to read along, I'm in the NIV, Jan Daniel chapter three, verse one, and uh, we're just gonna share this story with you and have a few insights, and and we'll be done. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So, the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before it. <laughs> then the herald loudly proclaimed, This is what you are commanded to do, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down in worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. <laughs> Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that the king, Nebuchadnezzar, had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold that you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. 
So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who may say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. <laughs> and there you go, the word of the Lord for today. So, thoughts on this, guys. I mean, it's it's quite a story. And uh, uh, I, I just, I love the um, uh, absolute confidence of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember the context here? I mean, they, they are uh, the exiled Jews in a foreign land. Uh, the culture that they were living in was completely pagan, completely all rooted in this idea that you know it's okay to bow down to a giant idol <laughs> and and somehow that's normal and even expected and and they knew better they just was like you know what no matter what the culture says we know the truth there is one true god and he alone deserves our worship and and they were willing to put their lives on the line for this and, uh, um, you know, I know today we're not struggling so much with uh, uh, big giant idols that we bow down to made of uh, wood or gold or uh, things made by human hands uh, like so many struggled with uh, back in the Old Testament. Uh, I think today our, our, our idols are just different. Um, what is an idol? Anything that we put uh, before God, whatever that is in our lives that is, is most important and and uh, the, the metaphor here is, you know, what, what are we bowing down to that uh, is, is truly in place of uh, our complete and loyal worship to the one true God? You know, the, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. So, you know, what is that idol for you? Well, what is it that, uh, that you're bowing down to that uh, you would say, you know what, I, I, I have to be honest, this is... This is something that um, I'm, I'm really putting ahead uh, of God. And uh, I, I just I love the confidence of these guys. They, they just um, uh, were, were literally willing to say, you know, look, uh, you know, you may be powerful king, but, but we serve a, a God that is mightier uh, and can rescue us. And, and uh, you know, in, the, in this particular case, uh, uh, they, they were rescued. Uh, they were also very honest in saying, you know what, uh, may, maybe, maybe this is our time to go. If so, that's okay. We're, we're not going to compromise. And uh, I just know for, for all of us, you know, this life is fleeting and uh, we're only here for a short amount of time. And, and uh, I know God is looking for us to, to just be wholeheartedly sold out to him, whether we're here for a few years or for many, uh, God is asking the same of us to be fully, fully devoted to him. Uh, I, I, the culture again, I just, it, it's, it's hard for us to get our heads around how, um, uh, how chaos, uh, reigned there in Babylon and just how, how anti-God that culture was. And I, I feel like, uh, the world that we're living in today is just becoming increasingly more and more like, uh, Babylon of old, where it's just, just hostile towards, uh, uh, those who, uh, are not willing to bow down to, to the gods of this culture. And uh, I just, you know, I, I, as I challenge my kids, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reminding them, look, you know, it, it may be in your lifetime that, that you will be forced to choose uh, and, and make a stand that, that literally could cost you your life. Uh, I believe that's happening already right now around the world, uh, that there are situations. Uh, we look at what's going on in Afghanistan, and, and I'm praying for our brothers and sisters there who, who literally are realizing that they may be at a moment, much like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and uh, um, having to, to choose uh, you know, what, what they uh, align with. And when they say they align with the true God, 
uh, that, that that literally may cost them their lives. God may save them. God may say, no, it's, 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 it's time to go. And, and there are many martyrs who, who have given their lives uh, um, for, for, uh, for Christ, for, for just standing boldly uh, when it might have just as been easy to just say, you know, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to um, claim allegiance to, uh, to the Lamb today. Um, so there's our challenge for today. I hope uh, as, I, as I read through God's Word, there was something there that maybe uh, uh, latched on to you. Um, I, I just, I love uh, this whole theme here, how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they just um, uh, really had confidence that, that God was going to protect them. And uh, if you have ideas or insights uh, that, that you want to contribute, uh, by all means, please place them in the comments here uh, on the YouTube page. But uh, I just am very excited by uh, this idea that we can be bold for Christ uh, in the midst of the culture in which we live, no matter how hostile it gets towards the one true God. Lord, I thank you so much for our, uh, this time and your word today. Uh, we love you. You are a great God. Uh, we uh, today just bow in allegiance before you. You have our whole hearts, uh, our full worship, and uh, our 100% allegiance. Lord, uh, just probe our hearts if there are any uh, gods in our lives that uh, we have placed before you, things that... Uh, uh, we just need to place into your hands and say, God, you, you have this. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm just going to give it to you and let you be the Lord of that piece of my life that uh, I'm holding on to right now. Uh, I pray, Lord, that uh, you would just take that from us. And uh, Lord, you will not let us down uh, when we put you first in, in all that we do, Lord. And uh, we thank you so much for your promises and for just the great God that you are today. Lord, uh, we love you. Um, just uh, continue to guide us. Give us wisdom, Lord. Uh, we are living in, in challenging times. We do pray for our, our brothers and sisters uh, in Christ in Afghanistan right now. We pray that you would just, uh, um, just guide them, give them wisdom, give them uh, uh, just a sense of peace, Lord, that, uh, that you are there. Uh, we do pray for their protection, Lord. We pray that, uh, that they would have opportunities to uh, uh, boldly share your message. We know that uh, uh, there's so few believers there. We just pray that uh, that they would just be strong lights for you. And uh, we pray against the evil ones that uh, uh, may want to bring them harm. And uh, so, Lord, uh, we also pray for uh, those who need to uh, um, get out of the country, that uh, you'll provide safe passage for them and uh, give our government officials uh, wisdom uh, during this, this time. Uh, we pray the same right now for this global pandemic and uh, that uh, right now as uh, this virus is uh, just wreaking havoc on, on so many, uh, Lord, we just pray for protection. Uh, we pray that you will uh, keep, uh, keep us safe, Lord, and we pray that uh, you would uh, keep others safe in our community and uh, around uh, this country and around the world, Lord. We just uh, pray that uh, you would be able to uh, help us to capture this moment for the gospel, Lord. Uh, we are burdened today that there are, are many people who have never uh, bowed uh, before you and given their allegiance to you. And Lord, uh, I pray that uh, this good news that we have of what you did on the cross is something that we can continue to deliver boldly and confidently to many, many more lives. Um, we love you, Lord. You are an awesome God. Thank you for the start to our day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks a lot, guys. God bless you. Have a great day.